Hello and welcome to this video on how to use the M plus calculator for a latent transition analysis model with a covariate. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation models, factor models, multi-level models, and latent class models. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly stats newsletter and uh, also other videos and workshops. In this video, I want to show you how you can use the M plus calculator for a latent transition analysis model with a covariate. When we add a covariate to a latent transition model in M plus, we can analyze, for example, whether the latent Oh, sorry, whether the covariate has an impact on the class sizes and whether the covariate influences the transition probabilities, meaning we can look at whether the transition probabilities vary as a function of the covariate or for different values of the covariate. And we can also take a look at whether class sizes depend on the covariate. Here as an example, I have a model with two time points and two classes at each time point, as well as one continuous uh, covariate, C. So in this model, C1 is the latent class variable for time one with two latent classes. C2 is the latent class variable for the second time point, also with two classes. And um, in my overall model in M plus, I'm regressing the time one class variable C1 on C, Z, excuse me, such that the class sizes could differ across values of Z at the onset at time one. And then I have a transition model where C2 is dependent on C1. So I'm modeling the transitions from time one to time two by regressing the time two latent class variable on the time one class variable using logistic regression analysis. Furthermore, you can see that I added class specific statements or specific statements for um, uh, model C1 here for the model for time one, where I said that C1, C2 depends on Z in class one and C2 depends on Z in class two. And so what that does is it allows for an interaction effect such that the covariate Z not only has a main effect on C1, but it also has an effect on the relationship between C1 and C2, such that for different values of the covariate, the relationship could be different, meaning the transition matrices could be different for different values of the covariate Z. Furthermore, in this model, I'm assuming measurement invariance or measurement equivalence across time such that the time one and time two classes are um, identical in terms of their item conditional response probabilities. You can see here that I gave the same labels for the threshold parameters in class one at time one as I did for the same class at time two. And so also I gave the same labels for the thresholds in um, class two here. And so this holds the class profiles equal across time such that the classes are comparable and have the same structure. Now in M plus, when you run such a model, you get information on the main effect of the covariate under logistic regression odds ratio results. So here you can see an odds ratio estimate for the regression of the time one class variable on Z. And so this estimate here 0.276 gives you an odds ratio and you also obtain a 95% confidence interval for this odds ratio, which here ranges from 0.204 to 0.373. Now, what does this tell us as we um, no, um, at least if we're familiar with odds ratios, then we know that an odds ratio of one indicates that there's no relationship between two variables. So in this case, an odds ratio of one would indicate that the time one classes do not depend on Z or do not vary 
um, across the values of z, whereas an odds ratio smaller than one or larger than one would indicate that there is an association between the latent class variable and the covariate z. Here in this case, you can see that um, not only is the odds ratio point estimate smaller than one, but um, of importance so the, or of um, relevance here is that the 95% confidence interval does not include one. So that indicates that the odds ratio is significantly different from one. So in other words, there is a significant association between the class variable and the Z covariate. And so this is one thing that the calculator will help us understand better because in the probability calculator in M plus, you can see, so say um, in more interpretable terms, what effect the covariate has on the class sizes. Now, furthermore, the other interesting effect here is the covariate effect on the transition probabilities. So we want to know, does the covariate influence the transitions from time one to time two such that transition probabilities would be different for different values of z. And so where we can study this is here in this table where we can see the effects of z on the transition probabilities. And so for this it's um, important to know that M plus uses the diagonal of the latent transition matrix as the reference category because the diagonal indicates in a transition matrix the stability or stayer probability, so the probability of staying in the same class over time. And so then this is used as the reference um, category. And you can see here that the first transition here, which is relevant, is this one where people transition from class one to class two over time. And you can see that the odds ratio here is 2.093 and it is statistically significantly different from one because the 95% confidence interval, which is given here in parentheses, does not include one. So this means that the covariate has a significant impact on the transition from class one to class two over time. Or in other words, um, for different values of Z, the transition probability of moving to class two is different. Yeah? So the, the covariate does influence the transition probabilities with regard to the class one transitions. You also can take a look at the class two transitions. And so here is so say the transition from class two to class one over time. And you can see that this odds ratio here is not significant because the 95% confidence interval does include one. It ranges from 0 0.782 to 3.471. And so that, that uh, interval does include one. So that's not a significant effect. So the covariate does not have an effect on that transition from time, sorry, from class, uh, two to class one. So let's take a look at what this means because with the odds ratios, it's still a little bit difficult to figure out how exactly the transition probabilities vary for different values of Z. And so here is where this M plus feature comes in handy when you click on M plus calculator. This is a tool that is specific to latent transition analysis with covariates in M plus. And so when we click on that, you can see that this calculator allows us to look at conditional probabilities for different values of the covariate. And so the default here is that our covariate Z is looked at at the sample mean. So what would be, so say the class sizes and the transitions for an average value of um, the covariate Z. And so we can look at that first by just simply clicking OK. And then you can see, OK, this is the condition where all covariates are at the sample mean. In this case, there is only one. So where only Z is there and Z is set to the sample mean. And you can see for the sample mean, the probability of belonging to class one at time one is 0.659. And for um, 
and the probability of belonging to class 2 then accordingly is 0 0.341. So at the sample mean there's a higher chance of belonging to class 1 than belonging to class 2. Furthermore we can see that at the sample mean of z the probability of staying in class 1 is 0.629 so that's the conditional probability that c2 will take on the value of 1 given that c1 takes on the value of 1 and so that's 0.629 so that's the probability of staying in that class for an average value of z whereas the probability of moving to class 2 over time is 0.3 371. And then also you get the transition probabilities for um, uh, the probability of um, moving to either class 1 or um, from class 2 or staying in class 2 here. And so you can see that the probability of staying in class 2 over time at the average value of z is 0.467, whereas the probability of um, moving is 0.533. So that's for the sample mean of z and now of course it's interesting to see what happens if values of z increase. And so in this case um, the z variable is a standardized variable where um, the values of z are in z-score metric. So a value of 0 indicates the sample mean and a value of 1 indicates one standard deviation above the mean. So we can look at values now for um, or at a larger value of z. Right now this is to so say when z is at the mean, meaning when it's set at zero. So let's take a look at what this what these matrices look like or what, what these probabilities excuse me look like when z takes on a higher value than the sample mean. And for comparison I'm going to compare, I'm going to copy these probabilities and I'm going to paste them into the output so we can look at them as well. So let's close this and I'm going to paste these here so we can still look at them. And then I'm going to go back to the calculator and now I'm going to choose a different value for z. I'm no longer choosing the sample mean but I'm going to assign the value of positive 1 which again means one standard deviation above the mean here because z is in z-score metric. Now this would not always be the case for a covariate but here specifically this covariate z has been um, transformed to z-score metric and so then when I assign a value of 1 in this case this means I'm now looking at z values of one standard deviation above the mean. So I'm going to click apply and then this value to use appears here and then I'm going to click OK and so now you can see the values are different than what we got before. Specifically the size of class 1 is now a lot smaller. So as um, we move to individuals with higher values on z we find that they are more likely to be in class 2 as compared to class 1. So previously we had about two-thirds in class 1 when we were looking at the sample mean of z. Now that we're looking at individuals one standard deviation above the mean of z we have about two-thirds in class 2. So that's a big difference in the class sizes and that shows why this main effect of z was significant. Why we had a significant odds ratio for the main effect of z on the c1 class variable. Furthermore, we can see that the likelihood of uh, staying in class 1 decreases as values of z increase. So you can see that the stability here is lower for class 1. It's now only 0.45 whereas previously it was 0.629. So this class becomes less stable as values of z go up. And the likelihood of transitioning to class 2 over time increases with increasing values of z. You can also see that there's a difference here in the transition probabilities for um, class 2, but these are not significant as we saw previously. So that the differences that we see here compared to here, those were not statistically significant because we saw that the odds ratio for that transition did include the value of 1 here and so this is not a significant difference whereas here these are significantly different. So 
In other words, the covariate Z does have an effect on the class one, uh, on the time one uh, class sizes, and it does have an effect on the transitions um, to class two from class one um, over time. So that's what you can then see based on that probability calculator. So the probability calculator is very useful in my opinion to make clearer what the odds ratio results mean that M plus gives you for covariate effects in latent transition analysis. And then you can look at those probabilities for whatever different values on your covariate that interest you and that makes it a lot more interpretable. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional video, videos and workshops on latent class analysis, latent profile analysis, and latent transition analysis. And I'll see you next time.